to like require hostship. Oh. Okay, it already started. Anyways, what? Well, and we're live. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, Gracie. Hey. Hope you're doing well. I know you're tired. But let's have a wonderful conversation <laughs> about <laughs> being Asian American and everything else under the sun. Okay. Starting off, well, I've kind of talked about myself in some other po- in, in the other podcast. So uh, we'll start with you. Uh, what's uh, yeah? What's your family history? Starting, let's see, with your your dad's side. Uh, okay. Well, my dad like grew up in the countryside, like way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and like even now, whenever we like try to go to his house, we have to take the car and drive like 30 minutes or 40 minutes from like the airport to his like family house place yeah um like my dad's grandpa so I guess my great grandpa he was like uh, a landowner in China and so like landowners um they like are really wealthy in China and stuff so um they had like a lot of money and then the communists came into power and um, they killed off my great grandpa and oh. I think they killed my grandpa. No, they left my grandpa alive, but my grandpa had like a really rough childhood growing up and they didn't have a lot. And like my dad always tells me the story of my grandpa, like surviving on like one salted egg and rice for like an entire month. So life was rough. Um, And then he had my dad, and my dad grew up to be, like, the first kid in his village area to go to college. Yeah, and then he went to college, and that's where he met my mom, and then they came to America, and they had me. All right. Wow. That's really interesting. Huh. So, I think thinking back to my my own stories and like contrasting, like my mom grew up in the countryside too, but I don't I don't think they were a wealthy landowner or anything. But um, she talked about this like mm, social hierarchy or whatever, how like I guess there's like the the people in the country were like the farmers are like the lowest tier and then like if you were in the country and like you worked in a factory you're like a higher tier and then like city was like better than that or something i don't know if you know much about that but i'm just curious about Uh, (laughs) the social dynamics not really i just remember my dad telling me that like landowners had a lot of money because they like made their money off of the land and they had to like sell stuff and I don't know he just told me that they had like a really big house my great grandpa had like three wives or something and then he had like a lot of land yeah interesting and you said their house is also still there yeah so like uh their house that my great grandpa grew up in it's not there anymore but the house that my grandpa grew up in uh it's still there it's not like really big or anything it's kind of like run down but like it's enough to like live in and survive off of so yeah do you have like relatives living there yeah so (laughs) yeah my uncle and like his family like they live like uh like a mile or two away from them and they have like their own house and it's like a three-story house it's pretty nice and uh that's where they normally like stay Mm. and uh my grandparents will like go visit them from time to time because I mean like it's a mile or two away you can walk there easily um and they like cook for them they like take care of their kids yeah okay Okay, well, let's uh, <laughs> let's go on to your mom's side. What's up with, uh, with her? 
my mom like grew up more in like the city I guess she like compared to my dad she had like a much better childhood my dad didn't have a lot when he was growing up but my mom had like um she had like a tv when she grew up so she was her family was like not too bad off um but like she had like a lot of family drama um I think it was something to do with like her great aunt or something her great aunt didn't like um like my mom's side of the family or something like that and so they always like gave her a lot of like trouble for no reason and yeah my mom like I don't know she always tells me that she like didn't study when she was a kid she was like oh yeah I was a really bad student but like I always got really good grades so it didn't matter (laughs) and then um she didn't like go I don't think she went to high school actually she just like Um, started working as like a preschool teacher and um, she worked at the uh, city yeah she worked at the city where she met my dad and then um, they like were introduced by these like matchmakers or like it was like a couple and like the guy knew my dad because the the guy worked with my dad in the same research institute and the uh, the lady worked with my mom at like the school and so um, they were like, oh, yeah, like, you know, we have this, these, like, two people, like, um, let's make them meet. And so they, like, match make them together. And then, wow. yeah, and then my mom came to America, and then she had me, <laughs> and now I'm here. Okay, we kind of, like, skip around a lot. Yeah. But okay, I'll, uh, I'll work with <laughs> what you give me. Okay, so so the big jump is like america like that that's a journey (laughs) immigration like just reflecting on on my family story like that was not easy (laughs) uh i mean like my parents were like my mom told me that the only reason that she married my dad was because he promised her that he would like have a nice house and like you know like a nice car he was going Your to your gold America. digger <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then she was like yeah your dad like promised me all these things so i was like you know like um sure why not and so they got married after like a year like of knowing each other and then um like they went to visit each other's families and stuff and apparently like my dad brought like a whole pig to go see my parents or my mom's family and he was like i have a pig with me <laughs> Um, and then, uh, like, my dad was, um, working at this research institute. He did his, like, PhD thesis on rabies or something like that. Yeah, and so, uh, I guess, like, he just wanted a better life for my mom and his future kids. So, um, he, like, applied to this, uh, research place thing in Georgia, and then um, they moved to Georgia, and that's where I was born. Yeah, and they, like, left behind their entire family, too, and so, um, like, at first, when they left China, uh, my dad was, like, telling my mom, like, oh, we can go back, like, every couple of years or something, and then they waited, like, 10 years before going back, so it was rough for them, I'm sure. So, mm. okay, it sounds like a pretty relatively easy process, at least in terms of applying to this other research institute and like getting the necessary documents to cross over. Yeah, I think like my dad just got really lucky and there was like an opening there. So he was like, oh, let me jump at this opportunity. Mm. Yeah, so since we kind of left, you left off on, like, oh, they've, like, left their family in China, Mm -hmm. like, how's that dynamic been, and has anyone else, like, moved to the States? Nope, just us. Okay. Um, like, my grandparents came to visit our family in, like, 2004. 
four, maybe, um, just to like help take care of me and my brother um, when my brother was born. Okay, I guess that was 2003. Um, and like, I guess they like tried living here for a couple of months, but they didn't really like it um, because the place where we live, there weren't like a lot of Asians and they didn't speak English. So it was really hard for them to like get used to living here. Um, and my mom didn't like speak English well at the time either. So uh, it was just mainly my grandparents and my mom staying at home and taking care of us while my dad like went to work and like did his own thing. And so I guess my grandparents like never really liked, liked it here. They just decided to stay in America, I mean, in China. And <laughs> like, uh, I guess like now they're kind of like really old and they don't want to like fly anymore because flying's like really rough. Um, so I don't know. They never really like wanted to come back, I guess. And then I have an older cousin on my mom's side and she always talks about like wanting to come here to like visit and to like vacation and hang out. But uh, my uncle and my aunt are like really like strict or no, I wouldn't say strict, but they're like pretty, they're like very cautious about like sending her off to like a foreign place by herself. It's not really by herself because we'll be here. But they just don't really want her to go because they're like, it's dangerous. Like, what if something happens? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So how has that mm, shaped your experience? Like growing, growing up, up over here without yeah. any relatives? Yeah. Uh... I mean, I don't really know. Like, I, I've i never had, like, the chance of spending a lifetime with my grandparents, like, I don't know, 10 minutes away. So I don't really know what it's, to, what it's like to, like, have that. Um, when we went back to China, it was, like, I guess it was really nice, like, when we went back to China. But, like, I just don't see how it would, would work out, like, long-term. Because, like, my parents are, like, very independent. Whereas my, like, uh, my uncle and my aunt on my dad's side, they're, like, uh, I wouldn't say they're, like, completely dependent on my grandparents. But they do, like, my grandparents do do a lot of things for them. Like, they took care of their kids. They do a lot of the cooking. Um, they do some of the cleaning. Um stuff like that but like I mean we're we were able to get along like without them so I guess it was like okay for us I guess like sometimes I get jealous that like other people like other kids are like oh yeah I went to go hang out with my grandparents or like oh yeah my grandma uh, like made me food or my grandpa like took me out shopping or whatever um but like I don't know I guess that's stuff that I could do by myself too it's not the same <laughs> it's not the same like it's not but you gotta make the best of your situation so like we spend as much time as possible when we go see our grandparents mm. so yeah i think my grandparents like my brother more than they like me though so it's because he's a boy <laughs> yeah because he's a boy they like the last time, the last two times we went to visit them in China, they would like walk around the village and they'd be like, come look at our grandson. He's so big. He's so strong and tall. And like, you know, he looks like you know, docky or whatever. And then I'll just be walking behind them like with my parents and I'm like, dang, okay. I guess this is how it is. Like, this is fine. Well... <laughs> We could talk about that in this podcast. So that's a that's a loaded topic, especially in light of current events. I don't I don't think it's fine. I mean, like I think it's balanced out in a sense, because like whenever we go visit my dad's family, I'm like one of the only girls there. So like, 
you know, like, the boys get all the special treatment, and they get to, like, go eat first, or whatever, like, it's whatever, but whenever we go hang out with my mom's family, like, my older cousin, she'll, like, take me out shopping at night, and she'll, like, hang out with me, and we'll, like, just have, like, a lot of fun together, and my brother is, like, the only boy on my mom's side of the family, so he just kind of, like, hangs out by himself on his phone. <laughs> okay. Um, I, that makes you feel better. Well, Great. I, I, I'm I, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's really interesting. There's so many avenues to go from here. Well, I guess since we we you've left off on uh, distant relatives, it's uh an interesting thing. I, I have like a couple older cousins like first cousins uh, that they're like eight, ten years older than me. Something like that. Uh, <laughs> Anyways. Um, growing up with them, it was kind of nice. Like we would go on vacations and stuff together but like we would all we also lived like not quite an hour apart but they lived in clear lake um so it's it's not like you know the round trip is going to be a, a quite annoying so we didn't like really go see them that often <laughs> but like holidays and stuff um but they still went to our the church we go to that's like nearby here Isn't that like actually. an hour away for them then? Yeah, but like, I don't, for, for their family, I was like, to see my grandmother, my aunt's mother, so, and, and they found community here that they enjoyed, so then they just didn't want to change. Um, anyways, that's all I was to say about the cousins, like, it was fun I guess to be with them but it was like they couldn't do much together <laughs> just because there was so much of a gap and they kind of was yeah they just did their own thing a lot of the time uh, but we also have some other relatives in the United States uh on my dad's side I have like a lot of second cousins it's, it's kind of interesting um so like my grandpa was the youngest of like a ton of kids and he also married late and had kids late. He was like 40 when he got married. Um, <laughs> so like my dad and his cousins, they're literally like a generation apart. Like his cousins are like 20 30 years older than me <laughs> so like my my <laughs> yeah so so my second cousins they're um they're kind of like my dad's age they have kids they're um you know in, in the in the middle of their life <laughs> it's uh it's a it's an interesting thing mm. but like there's there's plenty of kids i guess my age sometimes they they make this joke where they say like they call him grandpa or something. <laughs> um, I don't know, but like going up to to New York, it's like we never really communicated much with them, and like I don't know, we'd only spend like at most a week, maybe ten days with them, and uh, I don't know, we just had separate worlds. Maybe it's like. Mm, we both live in America. I don't know. Random conjectures. So are there That's kids cool. like more your age? Yeah. Uh yeah, they're they're in the range, yeah, for sure. Do they treat you like like children? <laughs> what who who are you who's the they? Like your second cousins, the one who are like the ones who have like kids. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess. Well, when I visited them, like, 
I visited once when I was really young, so I don't really remember a ton. But like after that, I was like almost done with high school at that point. So I guess you could say they treated me as children. I mean, we didn't really interact that much. Uh, yeah, they it would just be like the the adults like talking with each other and like it would just be like us shuffling from one meal to the next <laughs> but, yeah I have like a couple older cousins on my dad's side and uh they're like all like 30 maybe like mid 30s um and they have like kids of their own but uh, they all treat like me and my brother as like younger siblings, I guess, like the babies of the family. Um, when we went back in 2015, they like uh, took us out shopping and they were like, oh, like whatever you want, just like tell us and we'll buy it for you. Or like whatever you want to eat, like just tell us and we'll get it for you. Or anything you want to drink, like just bring it to us and we'll pay for you. Um, and there was this, oh, there was this one cousin that I really liked. Um, he, like, took us out to, like, uh, an amusement park at night. And uh, it was really fun. He, like, um, paid for, like, everything, too. And I was like, dang, okay, I like this cousin. He's fun. And also, like, uh, he took <laughs> us out to, like, a night market. And um, they had, like, a mung bean soup. It was, like, cold mung bean soup. It was so good. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to get this again when we come back. And then we did it, and I was like, oh, I missed out. But yeah, that was like one of like my best memories of 2015. Okay, cool. Okay, hmm. let's talk about uh, growing up. <laughs> oh boy. Talked about parents coming over and then you just get plopped out and then what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you like move around a bit? Like yeah, you're obviously yeah. not in Georgia anymore. I'm here now. Uh yeah, I was born in Georgia and we lived there for four years. So like a year after my brother was born, my parents were like, let's yeet out of here and we went to Texas. I don't really remember anything from Georgia because I was so young. Um, I just remember like cold because like one winter it snowed and I guess that was my first memory. It was snow and it was cool. Um, I had like a childhood friend there. My like parents were like, oh yeah, you guys were super close when you were younger. I have no recollection of him. I don't remember what he looks like. I don't remember like uh, what we did as kids because, like, we were so young. Um, but apparently he's in California now, so that's cool. Um, I Have was, you like, reached joking. out to him? No, I, like, don't know any, like, I only know his name. And I don't even know his last name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like, I don't know. I told my parents, like, hey, we should, like, like, reach out to them and see if they're, like, still around and... Like, we should go see them. Because I've always wanted to go to California. Seems like a cool place. Um, and, like, my parents were like, oh, yeah, that's a funny idea. Ha ha. And then we never talked about it again. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I guess not. Um, but, yeah, uh, we moved to Texas when I was four. Because my dad, like, finished up his, uh, like, PhD, I think. And then we went to a &M because my dad was doing research there on, like, animals, I think. Um, I think he, like, worked mainly with a lot of rats. I don't know exactly what he was working on. But yeah, we moved to College Station, and then we lived there for nine years. Uh, that's basically, like, where I grew up. I have, like, I made the most memories there, um, just because, like, I guess that's, when you remember the most from your childhood. I don't know. 
Um, but like we did, I did move schools a lot because like every single like there was like a like a zoning law thing where they like redrew the lines for the zoning thing. Um, and then I like moved schools, um, but there's only two middle schools in College Station, and there's two intermediate schools in College Station and two high schools. So like it was basically just me like bouncing back and forth across town. Um, I went to like one elementary school for two years, and then I went to another elementary school for the last two years, and then I went to intermediate school, and then um, I went to middle school for sixth and seventh grade. Um, and it was just like one school, another school, another school, and another school. And like, I guess it was kind of hard. Like, College Station is like a pretty small town. It's, it's like, not like there aren't a lot of people there so like uh you know like a lot of the people there um but like still like moving schools was really hard um because like I'm not a really social person unless like you approach me first I don't like reaching out unless like I reached out to I know bad it's very bad um but you said it not me <laughs> I mean I think it's bad like I should like try reaching out more but I'm just really bad at it unless somebody like talks to me first. Um, but like just like changing schools a lot, it was really hard. Cause like I would watch like um, people like be like, oh yeah, I'm hanging out with my best friend today. And it would be like best friends that they had known for like eight years. Like they had gr grown up with them and I didn't have anybody like that. And I was like, well, okay, I guess this is my life. Like this is fine. Um, and then, but, like, the good thing is that we, like, joined a church, um, in College Station, and I met my two best friends there, my childhood best friends, um, and, like, we became, like, really close. It was, uh, me, Hannah, and Sarah. Uh, Sarah's still in College Station, like, she's vibing there. She goes to Johns Hopkins, though, so, like, smart, smart girl. Um, and then Hannah moved to Pennsylvania back in 2012 like on the opposite side of the country um and then I moved to Houston in like 2013 I think and so like all of us just kind of like split ways and we we're like see you in like 10 years maybe um it happened yeah it does it sucks though because like you, like watch other people and they'll be like oh yeah I'm hanging out with this friend that I've known for like 16 years and you're like oh must be nice I don't know what that feels like so yeah um but like we still like keep in touch and stuff we'll, like text every <laughs> month because <laughs> we're all like busy like Sarah's like always she's like um a health a public health major so she's like studying really hard for like I don't know, like pre-med or comp sci or maybe double major. I don't know. Um, Hannah's like doing like something with chemistry or something like that. I don't really remember. But yeah, we're always like busy. So we'll, like call every couple months and like catch up and then we'll be like, see you in another couple of months. But yeah. And then in 2013, uh, I moved to Houston and then I did one year of middle school at Dallas Middle School. And then I went to Dallas High School. And that was the first school that I ever stayed at for like more than two years. So I was like, you know, I, I, think, I think this is a vibe. Um, and I met like a lot of good friends in Dallas Middle School that also went to Dallas High School. And so we kind of just like stayed together. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay i'll ask for some details um i'm curious about like how you were raised was it like your mom did you get like a babysitter or something oh go to yeah. extended day uh no so like uh my mom always tells me that like uh, your dad's like always working and stuff and i was the one who had to raise you all by myself so like my dad was like always at the lab um or like yeah, he was basically just always at the lab. 
like constantly. Um, and if he wasn't at the lab, then like, I guess he was at home eating dinner with us. Um, but yeah, aside from that, like my mom basically raised her by, uh, raised us by herself. And that's why like when my, oh, uh, when Tommy was born, my little brother, he, like my mm-hmm. grandparents came to visit for like a brief while. Cause like, it's hard taking care of like two kids by yourself. Like one kid, that's already rough, but two, oof, can't imagine. Um, I've never had a babysitter ever. Like, my mom was just always there. Uh, and I guess, like, when I was 12, she kind of started leaving me, like, alone at the house. Because, like, that's, like, legal age or whatever. Like, you can leave your kid alone when they're 12, hopefully. But, like, aside from that, like, all I remember is that she was just always there. Um, which is, like, fine. I think I turned out well, like, as a kid, maybe. Uh, (laughs) Sounds good. (laughs) Yeah, she, like, taught us everything, actually. Like, now that I think about it, like, she taught us, um, Chinese. Like, my, uh, like, a lot of adults, like, when, when, when my brother and I will go out and, like, we'll talk with other adults in Chinese, they'll be like, wow, your Chinese is so good. Like, where did you learn it from? Did you go to Chinese school? And, like, we're like, no, like, our mom taught us, because, like, um, she was, like, always there, so she was like, you know, you, you better learn some Chinese, it'll be good for you in the future. Um, and she bought, like, these, like, um, books from China, and, like, we basically just went through the books and learned Chinese. It was really hard, like, I'm not gonna lie, I cried so many times, and, like, she was, like, very strict when I was little. She was so strict when I was little. Um, like, in our neighborhood and in our church, she was known as, like, the tiger mom. And, like, oof, she was scary. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, my brother and I would be so scared whenever she got mad. We'd be like, oh, my gosh. Like, go run into our rooms and, like, hide. Um, and, like, uh, we got, like, spanked, like, a lot because... Like, if we didn't, like, do our work quickly enough, or, like, if we didn't finish our work, or if we were being bad, she would, like, spank us. And then um, she made us, like, I don't know, like, memorize, like, a whole bunch of Chinese characters. I mean, like, you're supposed to do that anyways. Like, that's how you learn. But, like, she was, like, very strict about it. And, uh, like, I remember that she and my dad got into, like, a lot of fights when we were little. Um, cause my dad would be like, you know, like they're just kids, like they should be out playing and like developing social skills or like whatever. Um, like you don't need to push them so hard. It's going to be fine. Um, they'll grow up to be like, okay, kids anyways. And then my mom would be like, you're always like taking their side. Like this is going to be good for them in the future. They'll appreciate it. And like, uh, you know, like you shouldn't be so lenient on them because then they'll grow up to be lazy. And so I guess they just had, like, very different different views on, like, raising kids. Um, but, like, I think we turned out fine. Um, I do, like, um, one thing that I did learn from, like, being a kid was that if I ever, like, want anything or, like, I want to do something, like, I always have to go to ask my dad first. My dad will almost always, like, say yes. Because he's, like, very, like, soft towards us. Like, whenever we ask him for something, he'll be like, oh, okay, sure my mom will be like oh you want to go somewhere like who are you going with when are uh, when are you going like uh when are you coming back like who uh like where are you going like just like all these questions you know and my dad will just be like okay whatever see you later and we're like okay um but yeah I mean like now that I've grown up like I do appreciate like my mom like beating the Chinese into us because like it was helpful like it is helpful like a lot of people will be like wow you know, like, your Chinese is so good. And I'll be like, thanks. My mom taught me. It was painful, but, you know, good for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I should really stop saying that word. I need to find a different word. Um, oh, I just want to say interesting less. Anyways. <laughs> Um, do you want to talk about 
the extracurriculars. I know we've talked about it before off podcast, but let's yeah. get it on the record. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like, like I said, my mom was like, you know, like one of those tiger moms and she would like throw me into like a, a bunch of extracurriculars. She'd be like, uh, I need to find like which one you're good at. Um, and so I did like gymnastics for a while. I did tennis for a while. I did dancing, um, lyrical, tap, jazz, ballet. Um, and then I also did swimming for a bit. Like swimming was kind of on and off because like I would go into swimming and then I'd be like, I hate this. I don't want to do it anymore. And then she'd be like, okay, you can take a break from it. And then I would take a break, but then I would go back because she'd be like, you need more exercise. And so I was like, fine. And then it was just like oscillations, I guess. Um, I did art for like a couple years. Um, never got like good at it. Like the best thing I can draw is probably like a stick figure, but you know, like <laughs> it's the experience that counts. I okay, guess. well, we'll play, we'll play some more broken picture phones. <laughs> no, <laughs> show me those so arts. Bad. Oh my gosh! When we played that, I didn't know what was going Dude, on. Like your di- your dinosaur was so funny. That was amazing. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how to draw. Like I can draw like a general like blob that kind of looks like it, but like anything like if you tell me to draw something like super detailed, I can't. Like, yeah. Okay, continue. Uh, I also did piano. I did violin. I think that's it, actually. But, like, that's a lot, I think. I think that's a lot. Um, All of those, I kind of, like, gradually, like, quit throughout the years, I guess, except for piano and violin. I stuck with those until, like, high school. Um, And then, like, in high school, my sophomore year, my mom was like, hey, like, we're spending, like, a lot of money on, like, both of these lessons. Like, piano and violin so you got to pick one because we can't like keep spending you money because I don't think you're going to be professional with this um and I was like I mean you're not wrong so I was like okay I want to do violin and she was like no you're going to do piano and I was like why did you bother asking me if you were going to decide for me like I don't understand um but she was she like she had pretty good reasons for making me pick piano she was like you know you've been doing piano for 12 years um whereas for violin you've only been doing it for like four five five years um and like you're actually like a lot better at piano than violin I mean I was fine at violin but like whatever um and she was like yeah your teacher says you have like a lot of talent so um, you're gonna stick with piano, and I was like, okay, like, I don't think I have a choice in this matter, so I, I, okay, um, so she made me quit violin lessons, and I remember, like, orchestra teacher, like, he was, like, really upset when I quit, like, Mr. Isidore, he was, like, so disappointed, and I was, like, I'm sorry, not my fault, like, I tried, I tried to stick with violin, and he, like, tried to find me, like, a dis- discounted like violin teachers like uh like cheaper violin teachers and he was like you should go check them out and I was like I'll tell my mom I didn't tell my mom because I knew she was gonna say no so I was like you know what's the point in asking um but yeah I did stick with piano until like the end of senior year and um like at one point I like seriously considered doing piano for like my major and uh I was going to be like a piano teacher or do like piano performance as my major. Um, And then I was considering doing like going to Baylor too, like as a double major for chemistry and piano. And then uh, like Baylor was just really expensive because their like cost of attendance is like 60,000 a year. And I was like, I can't afford that. So I just went to uh, UH which is fine. Like, I enjoy UH. Yeah. It's good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Tiger mom. 
So I thought it was really funny. She's like, or when you said, um, she's like, she's trying to figure out what you're what you're good in. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. She's a, like, you gotta be a prodigy at something. Let's just uh, let's just find what it is. What it, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like I'm literally a potato. I don't I don't think so. The funny thing is, you're not even doing piano right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, like what, I can play. Was she disappointed? She was, yeah, she is, she, like, she still is, like, disappointed. Um, like, sometimes she'll, like, look at me struggling to do my schoolwork, and she'll just look <laughs> over at me doing my homework, and she'll be like, you know, what would be a good major? And I'll be like, what, mom? And she'll be like, you know, you should go back and be a piano teacher. And I'll be like, no, mom, no, thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, she'll, like, bring that up every once in a while she'd be like why are you doing health or at the time I was doing chemistry she'll be like why are you doing chemistry you should do piano and I'll be like I'm good um, I love her. <laughs> but I mean she's like fine now like she's not a tiger mom anymore she like really mellowed out throughout the years I think she got tired. <laughs> she got tired? Yeah, she was like, I'm tired of seeing you. I'm tired of, like, constantly watching you. It's whatever now. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder how my, my grandma and your mom would get along. Is your grandma well, a tiger like, Sort of. But, like, she couldn't, like, fully be it because she's, she's a grandma. Be a tiger grandma. I mean, she could, but that means she's also like a tiger parent then, to her, to her, what daughter-in-law, and that that didn't run well with my mom. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't think I would deal well with like a tiger grandma either. Like I'm very like, I'm pretty strong-willed, really stubborn, and like. I don't like it when people tell me to do something. Like sometimes I'll be like, it'll be like my turn to wash the dishes. And I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna wash the dishes later. And then whenever my parents tell me to do it, I'm like, well, I don't want to do it anymore because you told me to do it. Like I would have done it. <laughs> I would have done it if you hadn't told me to do it. I mean, I'll do it eventually. Like later. I just don't like it. Like tomorrow. <laughs> no, like like an hour later. Uh, no, yeah, okay, I feel that, but it's like, it's also very childish, something. I know, I know. <laughs> it is something that I have to work on, but. Oh, <sighs> yeah. well, anyways, back onto tiger people, it was uh, interesting, it's like, I was pretty scared of my grandma, I guess the parallel you being scared of your mom. For like oh, definitely all through elementary, but then like as I started getting bigger, I was just like I was like I was physically just like able to like just be like no <laughs> or like stop <laughs> don't hit me. <laughs> and definitely by high school it was just like it was just, I was like taller than her, bigger than her. <laughs> I just exert my tall. <laughs> you so t on her and just like go like this. <laughs> Oh my god. No, like, like, uh, I don't know, I mean, you said your, your mom, like, hit you and stuff, but, like, we, we had, like, a, oh, I love how, like, Asians have this, this, like, camaraderie about, like, how, or what items that you've been hit with. It's like, yeah. so, we, we had, like, a, a, a duster, but it was never used for dusting. It was only used for hitting us. I was like, what the <laughs> now that I'm, well, I, I didn't think about it that much until but like it literally was never used for dusting and like it had like i don't know if it was fake feathers but it was like it was feathers something and like it, it was like a, a wooden stick like it was it was pretty long too but like skinny so like you know get, get a good nice whack that's like man <laughs> we like definitely did not have a duster we had we had rulers. Oh, oh, I have a ruler. 
triggered. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we used to have, like, these two wooden rollers and, like, one plastic one. All of them are broken now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you still have it, even though it's broken? No, we used to. Like, not anymore. Oh. Um, but, like, every single time we got in trouble, uh, my mom would be like, uh, go bring the ruler here. And so we would go get the ruler, and she'd be like, put out your hand. And we like, put out her other hand, and she would just take the ruler, and she'd, like, whack it. It hurt, like, so bad. And then, like, if we were, like, really bad, um, then she would, like, whack it, like, two times. And then, ah, thinking about it, like, scares me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, like, she, like, eventually, like, she broke all three rulers. And then, like, um, somebody, like, I don't know where it came from, but, like, all of a sudden, we had a metal ruler. And, like, how are you going to break a metal ruler? I don't know. But she started using the metal ruler after that. And, yeah. It got bent. <laughs> and she just turns it around and exchanges it out. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, I don't think it bent. It was, like, one of those, like, really flexible ones, the ones that you could kind of, like, bend. Um, yeah, so it wasn't, like, just a, like, hunk of steel, but it was, like. That would have been. <laughs> painful. But, yeah. Oh. Like, Nowadays, like, uh, if she can't find the ruler, or if, like, we're being bad, I don't know, I'm not bad anymore, I'm not bad anymore, um, or, like, I'm too old for her to, like, hit or spank now, so, like, she'll just find, like, whatever's closest and just, like, chuck it across the room at us. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, sometimes, like, she won't have anything except for her, like, flip-flop, so to, like, take off her flip-flop and just, like, chuck it across the room. It doesn't hurt. And, like, most of the time she's joking. Yeah. Okay, when she gets really mad at, like, my brother, because he, like, plays games all day, and she gets, like, mad at him, um, she has, like, a wooden rolling pin. The ones that you, like, roll for a dumpling yeah. dough. Yeah, and she takes that, and she'll just, like, kind of whack him with it. Knock him out cold. <laughs> <laughs> but like like oh. I said like she's mellowed out a lot now like she's I, she just doesn't like get as angry as often as she used to so yeah. okay. or like maybe we've grown up and she's just like yeah whatever it's whatever now I've done my best yeah. now they have to fend for themselves <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> I mean I think I'm too old to be like smacking around. You're never too old to be hit. By your mom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways. More stuff to dig into. Okay. We talked about this before, again, off, off screen. But um, since kind of the goal of this is to talk more about like Asian American <clears throat> being Asian American ish is I don't know what it is. Anyways, uh, I know um, your your time in College Station um, will definitely be much different than, than those of us who have grown up here in the the Fort Bend area, Fort Bend County. Yeah. For those who might be listening for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> if you don't mind sharing about being Asian yeah. in College Station. Um, yeah. So, like, College Station is, like, primarily white people, um, which is, like, fine. You know, white people are pretty nice most of the time. Like, we got along pretty well with them. Um, our church, like, shared the building with a white church. So, like, most of the time, like, it was fine. Um, and, like, there's a pretty big, like, Asian community in College Station, too. Um, but, like, it's definitely not as, like, prevalent as the white community. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I just, like, remember when I was, like, in elementary school, um, my mom would, like, pack me lunches. And they'd be, like, balzi or, like, jiaozi or, like, bean. Or like rice with like vegetable 
Um, Can you and, explain all those things? I don't understand any of that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so for those who don't for know, those who are just, listening, yeah, yeah. So balls are, are like um, they're like steamed buns, and there's like filling inside. Um, most of the time, it's like vegetables with some kind of meat. Uh, I really like the cabbage and pork ones. Those are my favorite. I grew up with those, so I'm like, you know, those are the, the best. Um, and then jalza are dumplings, and those are the kinds that you see in like Asian markets. Um, they also they're like they're like steamed little pockets of like dough with filling inside. They're really good too. They're like my comfort food. I go eat them whenever I'm sad. Um, and then uh, we have bing, which is like flat bread, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's what, like, you would call it in English. Um, my mom would make tongyo beans, so that's, like, green onion pancakes or, like, flatbread. And then, um, and then there's rice with, like, vegetables. So you have rice and then you have, like, the side dishes, which is, like, vegetables or, like, meat or, like, stuff on the side. Um, yeah, so my mom would, like, pack that for me when I was little and, like, I love Chinese food, like, it's so good, um, and, like, American food can just be, like, really, like, greasy sometimes, but, like, Chinese food is, like, so good, um, but, like, like, growing up, um, in a predominantly white community can be, like, really difficult when, like, the little, the kids, like, um, like, sometimes they don't, like, have a filter yet, like, for what they say, um, and so, like, sometimes they would, like, look at my food, and they'd be, like, oh, what is that? It looks so nasty. Or like, it smells so bad. And I just look at it and be like, oh, this is like, um, dumplings, or like, this is bao, you know, like, it's what I like to eat. Um, but they would like always tease me. And so like, uh, I just got like, sad, I guess, or like upset. And so like, I guess at one point, like, I started going to my mom and being like, hey, mom, like, can you pack me food that's not like, weird and she'd be like what is weird and i just be like you know like chinese food like can you pack me american food and she'd be like is there something wrong with it and i was like no i just i just don't want to eat it anymore and like um now that i like look back on it i feel like really bad about like asking her that because like um like chinese food is like a really big part of their culture like people bond over meals like that's just like a social thing right and like um like Chinese food is always prepped with like a lot of care and it takes a lot of time and it's always really yummy um but like dang I just feel so bad like asking her that now um but like I guess she like gave in and she like started packing me like normal lunches like PB and J sandwiches um, and, like, chips and stuff, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, I still feel bad, like, I think about it, I'm just, like, dang, I'm so sorry, mom, um, and, like, uh, I remember when I was in elementary school, some kid, like, called me, like, a chink for the first time, and I was, like, I don't even know what that means, so I just kind of, like, laughed along, like, laughed and, like, went along with it, and I didn't even, rem like, um, it didn't happen again until, like, in high school. Um, I mean, like, nobody called me a chink in high school, but, like, I heard that, like, term again, and I was like, oh, I remember that term. Like, somebody called me that, like, back in elementary school, and it wasn't until high school until, like, I actually understood what it meant, and I was like, dang, like, little kids, like, can be so mean sometimes. I don't know. Maybe they didn't mean it, but, like, I don't know. Um, and then, like, a lot of the times, like, uh, I would just, like, stay, like, kind of away from, like, the other kids, and I would hang out with my best friends more, just because they were also Asian, and so, like, we kind of had, like, the same childhood growing up, um, and I don't know, I guess it was, like, self-segregation, but, like, it was just, it's easier to hang out with people who, like, have, who've been through the same things that you have, so, um, yeah. Oh, and then all the little kids would always be like, oh, you're Asian, so you must be really good at math, or, like, stuff like that, and I'd be like, um, 
actually, <laughs> I'm really bad at it. <laughs> Please don't ask me to do your math homework because, like, you're probably just going to fail. Um, and my mom would be like, why are you so bad at math? <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know. I just struggle. That's why you got to um, do piano. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'd always just be like, oh, yeah, like, can you, like, do this math problem for me? And I'd be like, I'm good, thank you. Like, I can't. Yeah. It, like, got better, like, once we moved to Houston, I guess. I'm, or, hmm. I guess I'm curious about the college station and here in Sugarland. I know you've mentioned you're, you're like, best friends. Um, they're both Asian. Uh, you went to an Asian church. I don't think that was abundantly clear, but right, you went to an Asian church. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> um, curious if you were able to like make friends with other ethnicities and like. Yeah, I guess we'll start with there. And so like throughout in College Station, and then like how that changed or developed as, as you moved here? Um, <clears throat> I guess, like, in College Station, like, I had a lot of, like, Asian friends, but I guess I, like, got along just as easily with, like, white kids or, like, black kids or Hispanic kids. Like, um, there weren't, like, a lot, like, it was, like, mostly white kids, and then, like, maybe some Hispanics, and, like, a couple Asians, and, like, a couple of black kids, um, but, like, um, I mean, like, it wasn't like I didn't get along with them, but it was just easier to, like, hang out with Asian kids, but, like, oh, like, now that I think about it, like, if I, like, go on my Facebook, and I, like, um, go look at, like, my, like, elementary school and middle school friends, like, a lot of them are, like, white, um, and I don't even, like, know if they still remember me as that, like, you know, like, that one random Asian kid who was in our class, like, she didn't really belong here, but, you know, she was here, um, yeah, they're just, like, all, like, white, and, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, my parents, like, they were, like, I don't want to say they're, like, super racist, but they kind of are. So, like, when uh, I was little... It's fine to well, say that they're racist. <laughs> my parents, I mean, we're all in, in some ways a bit racist. I would yeah. Argue, but yeah. continue. <laughs> my parents are, like, pretty racist. Uh, they don't like it when I say that, because they'll be, like, we're just, like, telling the truth. And I'll be, like, no, like, this is this is not the truth. Like, this is what you think is the truth, but it, it it's not. Um, but they were like, um, when we were back in College Station, they had like a very blatant like distrust of black people. And um, like when I was little, they'd always be like, oh, stay away from them. Cause like um, they're gonna like hurt you or something like that. But like I had like black friends at school, like I think they were like two or three and I was friends with them like it was fine and like I would try to tell my parents like you know like this isn't like you know they're nice people you can't just like stereotype an entire race um and it was kind of like that for Mexicans too and honestly like they're still kind of like that it's getting like a little better now um now that they're being like exposed to like more environments I guess um, cause my mom works at this, uh, Saudi Arabian company now, and she has, like, um, a bunch of, like, black coworkers and, like, some Hispanic ones, and, like, before, she would be, like, oh, yeah, like, stay away from those type of people, they, like, run, a like, they run in, dr uh, like, gangs, and they, like, sell drugs, and, like, they're gonna mug you, or, like, stuff like that, <clears throat> and then, um, like, when I started, like, high school, um, she'd be like, you know, like, I know you're probably, like, at the age for, like, dating. Um, you can date Asian kids. Um, I guess you can date white kids, but I don't want you dating, like, Black or Hispanic kids. And I was like, oh, like, 
okay, like, that kind of messed up, but all right. Um, but, like, now she's, like, working at that Saudi Arabian company, and she's, like, slowly starting to get, like, a better, like, um, like, a better worldview, and she'll, like, be, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I understand that, like, not all Black people are, like, I used to think, um, and there are a lot of nice, like, people out there who aren't like that, um, yeah, but, like, uh, like, with the whole, like, um, like, the Black Lives Matter movement going on right now, and the George Floyd, like, injustice going on, um, I don't know, she, like, keeps, like, my, both of my parents keep seeing, like, videos of, like, people, um, like, looting in, like, the department stores, and my mom just watched a video this morning of some kid, and he was, like, swinging around a baseball bat, and, like, going around and smashing in a bunch of, like, car windows and stuff, and it was a black kid, and so she was, like, talking about, like, oh, yeah, you know, like, this, this whole movement's kind of, like, bad, and I'm just, like, it's, not bad, but there are just bad people out there who support it. Um, yeah. Mm. Rough times we live in. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I forgot what I was thinking. <laughs> I think I went off topic a little bit. It's fine. This is just a free flowing conversation. It's fine, crazy. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I think I was gonna say like on the point of like dating. Yeah. Like, I sort of relate. Mm -hmm. Although my my parents or Grey One never really talked about it that much. Well, until I'm like, now I'm in college, and now they're like, when are you going to get a girlfriend? I'm like, calm down. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, my my grandma's well, the most racist of the three. She's, <laughs> uh, I think she, <laughs> she might have like a heart attack or something if, if I ever dated a black person. <laughs> it's it's kind, of, kind of bad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> man, oh, hmm. oh, that was something no, I remember. Keep jumping topics. Um, but yeah, even with my parents, well, I think my mom's like fine on me, baby, whoever. But my dad, he'll like, he'll like joke about dating a black person or something. I, I don't know how he phrases it, but like, I mean, the fact that he's even like joking about it is just like, it's, it's inherently a bit racist. Uh, but that, those, those are our parents. Anyways, uh, I think this, me asking you about, uh, Mm. having friends of other races I think that also like kind of inherently gets into like the realization of like your Asian-ness mm -hmm. and again this is something we've like talked about off camera um and so like well I guess I'll just let you talk about it about like I guess when you realize you're Asian and like how that affected how you saw the world <laughs> and other. Uh, I guess like I had like a pretty good idea of it ever since I was little, just because like, like Hall Station. It's like just a very different place than like Houston. Um, it was like when I started school I guess because like you just realize that you don't like look like the other kids um and <clears throat> I started wearing glasses at a really young age because I used to like read in the dark all the time 
And so they would be like, oh my gosh, you like wear glasses. Like it, it must be because you're Asian. And um, like, you know, like you eat like different food than the other kids and they make fun of you for that. And so you're just like, oh, well, I'm like, I'm different from the other kids. Um, I had a thought going on and then I lost my train of thought. But yeah, I just like, like, I guess it was like ever since I was young, I was just like, you know, like, I'm not like the other kids. The other kids are not like me. Um, we're like pretty different, but I can get along with them because like, I mean, I was like a small girl. So like, what am I going to do? Fight back? No. Um, I mean, I still am like a pretty small girl. Like I'm very short. Um, That's true. Yeah. Um, but I do remember in elementary school, like, I think it was, like, second grade or third grade, um, whenever these boys would make fun of me, I would, like, pick up these pebbles on the playground and I would throw it at them. Like, that's, that's like, the most I think I've done in elementary school as for fighting back. I was, like, you know, talk to me one more time about my skin color and I will throw this at you. Um, but like, aside from that, it was just like, you know, I'm not gonna fight you about it because I know I can't win. Um, yeah, I mean, nowadays it's like a lot better. Like, you know, if you like talk down to me or make fun of me and my culture, I will like, you know, I will clap back and I will probably call you like a racist person. I don't know, I'm not gonna call you names. Maybe I will. I don't know. Um, but, like, I think people nowadays are, like, a lot more aware of, like, social justice issues. So, yeah. And, like, the people that I hang around, like, are pretty diverse, I think. I used to hang out with, like, a lot of Asian kids in middle school and in high school. I mean, the high school that we went to, it was, like, a lot of Asian people and like honestly I don't really remember like a lot of like non-Asian friends like I I can think of maybe like five off the top of my head um <clears throat> but like once I got to college um it was like harder to hang out with Asian people because like um you're just like tossed into a bunch of classes with like like, if they're, like, honors college, then, like, maybe there will be more Asian people, but, like, not necessarily. Like, I remember uh, my human sit class, it was, like, very, like, racially mixed. Like, it was very diverse. And so, um, hanging out with, like, a bunch of Asian people became harder. And so, I guess I adapted. And, like, I have a lot of, like, non-Asian friends now. Like, if I think about it, I can, like, name like a whole bunch of people who aren't Asian <laughs> that I'm friends with. So I guess like for me it's like growing up out of the only Asian mentality, like only hanging out with Asian people. Yeah. That's interesting. There I go again. I wonder did you ever feel like inferior or anything, especially like when you were younger. Yeah. You... <laughs> I was shorter than the other kids. And like, I ate less. Well, I like, was just like, like smaller. The, yeah, I guess it's it's a complex issue. Oh. But I, I guess I was, like, since we're on this topic of, of race, like because of your race and your skin color, um, was that the or was it more just your physiological characteristic? I think it was. I think it was more physiological. Okay. Yeah, the thing I remember getting made made fun of the most was just my height, because I was like so small. Yeah, everything else was, like, fine. Because I had, like, pretty, I, like, my English was um, pretty good. And, like, I never struggled in 
yeah, I never struggled in school, and there was, like, people didn't make fun of me for, like, oh, your English is so bad. Ooh. I do remember this one time um, I was like applying for colleges and I had an audition for um, piano at Baylor and then I know I like told you this before I don't know if you remember but uh, like my mom and I drove up to Baylor like the night before my audition started or because my audition was like early morning the next day it was like 9 a.m. And I was like, yeah, we're definitely not setting out at like 6 a.m. to get to Baylor. Um, and so we drove up the night before. And then when we got there, like uh, my mom and I were like kind of hungry. So we went to like this Chick-fil-A and then we walked in and it was like it was so weird. Like walking in was just like it was like stepping into a different world because like we had lived in like Houston for like five years at that point six years maybe um and we had gotten like used to like seeing like a very racially diverse crowd like wherever we went like even if you go to like like Chinatown I guess like you'll still see like some white people some black people like a lot of Asians but like it's not completely Asian um and then like going to the mall or like places like that it's like you walk in and it's like a mix um but like in that Chick-fil-A, it was, like, all white people, and there were, like, maybe two or three black people, and there were no Asians at all, but I know that, like, Baylor has, like, a decent Asian population, so maybe they were, they just weren't out that night, I don't know, but, like, it was very wild, like, walking in, I was, like, my mom was, like, do you feel weird, like, being here, <laughs> I was, like, yeah, I feel weird being here, um, but yeah, that's just like, I guess, because like Baylor and College Station, they're like pretty close, I think. They're like an hour away from each other. So I guess it's like the same, kind of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Interesting. I don't have a thought right now. Well, Oh, I guess I was thinking about my experience a little bit. Um, Has anybody ever called you names? Like. So as far as I can remember, I wasn't called anything until I was in, a, in an adult. Um, it was just this really brief thing. I was like going to a Walmart. The one off like off 59. Wait, mm -hmm. no, that's not eight, right? Anyways, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I was like walking in and there's this Mexican guy who was leaving and he called me Chino. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, like I am, I'm Chinese. Like I took Spanish. <laughs> for many years I mean and even if you didn't it's like it's pretty close <laughs> um it, it, I mean it caught me off guard and like the words weren't uh kind or anything they were very much like intended I don't I guess as an insult yeah. um but like I mean I wasn't going to do anything about it it was just a very quick couple second interaction and then like he walked past me I walked past him um yeah but growing up in Fort Bend um I mean obviously you know you look a certain way you just look in the mirror mm -hmm. but every classroom I've been in has been so diverse and there was never like a lot of hostility. I mean, there was, there was always bullying, but that was more so on like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, either like your physical characteristics or like, but not skin color or uh, your demeanor, 
if you were like shy or more quiet. Um, I don't, mm, I'm trying to think of like when I had like a, a reckoning with my ethnicity. Mm. I think I always tended to like choose Asian friends. I went to it, I grew up in an Asian church that I still go to. Um, yeah. And it's just like, there wasn't, okay, this was the idea I was thinking about. There, there wasn't a lot of conversations about culture. It was like, we were just coexisting with one another, which is like, so I guess some people may say fine. And like, I don't know what like a better alternative would be at this off the top of my head right now, but like, yeah, I would, I would go like Sundays to my, my pocket of, of Asian uh, people, my community, um, go to school for learning. It's, I, I never really did much extracurriculars besides piano, and that's outside of school. Um, so I, yeah, so I guess like, kind of, mm, I never felt like compelled or saw a need to, I guess, reach out to people mm, who look different than me or something. I guess, yeah, there's just like the sense of security, familiarity with people of your own race and ethnicity. Yeah. Um, and I think that's still like a struggle uh, that continues to this day. Um, but obviously this is like weird dynamic. It's like, I'm not, I, I don't want to just befriend people just because like you're black. That's not how friendships form yeah. <laughs> organically. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I, I'm like, mm, it's hard to, to make friends with other races and types of people if you don't insert yourself into those spaces. Um, anyways, that's my... <laughs> I, think. Yeah, I guess like I mean it's relatable like I feel that um I think like the honors college was like very good for that um just because like I made like a whole bunch of friends through the honors college because like we were all going through the same thing at the same time like who doesn't struggle through human sit together and cry while writing papers at 3 a.m together like you know that's a bonding moment right there um, and like, uh, like I made like two of my close, three of my closest friends were all from the honors college and we all took human sit together and none of them are Asian. And so like, um, like after we became friends, we pretty much spent like every, every hour together. Um, like we would like go to class and then we would like have meals together and then like study together and then chill. And then it was like, um just very like close bond and I never thought like while I was growing up that I would become like that close of friends with like people like not Asian I don't know um and like like I appreciate that they have like tried integrating me into like or I want to say like integrating me but like they have like introduced like their culture into mine like I uh, they, like, took me to, like, get ca tacos one time. One of them took me to get tacos one time because he's Hispanic. And I was like, dang, this is so good. Like, what the heck? This is what you eat, like, all the time? And he was like, yeah, isn't it good? And I'm like, yes, it's freaking amazing. Like, oh, my gosh, I've been missing out my entire life. Um, and the other one, uh, he's, like, half Filipino, so I guess that's, like, kind of Asian. Um, and he's half white. So, like, he has, like, a kind of, like, a blend. Um, but, like, his white, like, shines through the most. And he'll, like, take me to, like, <laughs> what? Continue. Like, he took me to a park this one time. 
and like we were just like chilling and like talking about our life experiences in the park and it was it was great and I had a lot of fun um and like in return like I like take take them to like Chinese restaurants like um there's this one restaurant in Rice Village called Tiger Noodle House and like I brought them food from there once and they were like this is so good and I'm like yeah thank you I love it um and um the Hispanic one he like didn't like boba before and so he was like yeah I'm just not like that big of a fan of it and I was like okay well what do you normally drink and he was like slushies and I was like I think you're missing out and so uh like I just took him to like more boba shops and he started like now he drinks like now he is enlightened um he drinks like milk teas and like fruit teas and you know, he's having a blast, and I am like, yes, thank you. I cultivated that into him. I'm so happy. I cry for his wallet. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but, like, no, it is, it is culture. Technically, like, boba isn't even really Chinese. It's, like, Taiwan. But, whatever, you know. True. Yeah. That's cool. I'm glad the honors college was fruitful for you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All it did was for me was give me money. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> that too. But like, yeah. It's a good community. Hmm. Introspection question. Are there parts of being Asian American or, yeah, Asian American? Like, you want to explore more? Well, just like briefly talk about. I don't know, that's not really a broad question. I just came up with it. <laughs> that's a good question. I like, personally, I think like a lot of Chinese like, um, like traditions are really cool. Um, like, a lot of them are centered around food because like food is such a big part of Chinese culture um but like uh when I was little like uh I would like look at this calendar that my mom had and it would be like oh this festival is coming up or you know like this like holiday is coming up and I'd be like hey mom like what is that and she'll be like she'll like explain these like holidays and festivals to me and I'd be like cool um but I really like really thought about it even more and like I guess now it'd be cool to like um just like get like more into it like the lunar calendar I think that's really cool um I can't name all 12 zodiacs if you ask me but like I think it's like a very interesting way of alternatively looking at a calendar um I like the festivals all of them have really good food <laughs> um and like whenever like we go back to China again I really I definitely want to go to like um like even more like national parks and like museums and stuff um when we went to China last summer one of our family friends like took us to this like really huge park and like oh my gosh it was so much walking like there was just so much hiking there were so many stairs like I think I went up like 2,000 stairs that day and, like, the stairs were, like, really steep, too. They were, like, this, this steep. And, like, you had to go up all of them. Well, like, once you get to the top, thank you. I was dying that day. And the next day, I couldn't, like, move my legs. Um, <laughs> but, like, uh, when you get to, like, the top of, like, all of the steps, like, it's just, like, this, like, beautiful, like, view. And, like, it's just, like, trees and, like, mountains everywhere. And, like, I just like enjoyed it a lot like normally I hate going upstairs like we have stairs at home and I'll like like cry when I go up those sometimes like especially after I've eaten like a really big meal um but like at that mountain I was like dang this is amazing like would I come back here probably not but I like appreciate that like you know there was such a great view and like on the way down like you didn't have to go down the stairs there was like um like one of those slide. huh a slide <laughs> no not a slide um it was like one of those 
things that you go up the skiing slopes with, the cars. Oh. The little belt. It's like the conveyor yeah. belt, but for people. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there was one of those that you could take to go up the mountain and to like go down the mountain. Um, and our family friend was like, yeah, I didn't like take you guys up the mountain on the conveyor belt because you should like experience the journey and the pain. And I was like, I guess. I approve. <laughs> yeah, he like really worked out my legs that day. I was like, the next it was just so bad. Whew. Um, but like when we went down, it was like, um, like it was like really cool to see like how far we had gotten up and then like how far we had to go all the way down. And you can like see the little people like struggling to go up the stairs. It was cool. Um, but like, I like definitely do appreciate like parks more now. Um, I don't know, one day I want to go to like the Great Wall of China. I'm sure it'll be a lot of walking and a lot of stairs then too. Um, but for now, you know, like I just want to think about it. And like China's just like such a huge place. Um, like I definitely want to be able to visit more places when we go back. Yeah. If you go back. No, it's not a question of if, it'll be when when we go back well it's like in light of covid but anyways yeah i know but <laughs> it's not gonna be forever i hope you jinxed it anyways <laughs> um on this question of what else i want to learn or see about asian america i think i well first i guess i'll comment a little bit on yours it's cool that you, I, I see your interest in China as like one of like knowing your roots, your history. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a lot of that comes from your your connection with family there. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I've been to China, but like I went to Shanghai uh, and did like touristy stuff. Uh, we, we do have family there, but they're also in the country-ish, I think. Um, but for whatever reason, we haven't made a trip back. I don't know. Um, but for me, after asking myself this question, I think learning more about the Asian diaspora is really interesting. Because mm, I feel, or I think Jeremy Lee, my staff worker at UHIV, oh, yeah. <laughs> just have to uh, explain everything. Anyways, um, he's helped open my eyes, I think, to a lot of uh, things about being Asian American um, and how like China has been like an oppressor too many other Asian uh, ethnicities. Um, and like, I think people can make this general observation that the Asian hierarchy, if you will, is like Chinese people, Chinese, Japanese, Korean people, and then like maybe Indian people are in there. I don't know, like I, I'm not, I am, I'm like not uh, well versed um, in, in their culture and in their uh, where they're at in their age in their yeah, Asian American history, um, but then like Southeast Asia, uh, places like Thailand, Vietnam, the Philippines, Cambodia, um, all these places like it feels like yeah they're like second class citizens. And so, like, to, to unpack that and, like, wrestle with that brokenness and to acknowledge, like, what, what has happened in history and, like, yeah, I guess seek justice. Wow, that's such an IV answer. Oh, my gosh. What a, I am being indoctrinated. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, wow, that learning. is such <laughs> Oh. 
But cool. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? I think it's been a quick hour and a half. Yeah, Still got... it's been like an hour 30. Anyways. <laughs> Hour 40 with the not recorded part, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, sounds like you're good. Yeah, I think. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit this afternoon. No problem. Uh, yeah. Was well, there any? Oh, okay. Yeah. Last question. Is there anyone you want to see on here that I should have a conversation with? It doesn't have to be like, like somebody in our inner varsity circle. Like here, we, I don't think we really even talked about Christianity or anything, which is fine. Like, this yeah, this podcast true. wasn't supposed to be like targeting that per se. But yeah, is there anybody you have in mind? <laughs> I think you should talk to Hannah. Hannah Chang. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like her. <laughs> She's a busy, busy woman. <laughs> She's a very busy woman. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, she's. I think she's Taiwanese American. Yeah, that would be that would be really interesting. Okay. Thanks, okay. Gracie, once again, and bye bye, everybody. Bye. I'm gonna go make dumplings.